Hair and fiber evidence. You ever heard of a? You ever heard uh, of uh, the situation where the case hangs by a hair? Well, sometimes the ha case hangs by a thread, and that's why we need hair and fiber evidence. It does form a very useful form of evidence in many crime cases. Uh, as we can presumably see later, it's not all that easy to find. But hair and fiber evidence is common enough, and therefore we have to understand how it's used, how it's found, and, well, what it is. <clears throat> okay, let's look at hair first. Because um, you know what they say, hair today, gone tomorrow. Okay, so... Um, Hair is often found because people just have hair. Uh, so they do the crime, hair can fall out, and you might see it. Uh, that'll, you know, hopefully give a connection between a suspect uh, and the crime scene. The good thing about it is that it's resistant to decomposition. It lasts a long time. Uh, also, uh, this might actually be the main source of evidence. Uh, there are cases like that where it's only because of a hair that we're able to connect a suspect to a crime. Unfortunately, if it's only a hair and only certain parts of a hair, as we can see, it'll have only class characteristics. It's not always easy to connect a person to a hair uh, without any doubt. Uh, it's not usually, uh, by itself, uh, does not usually have individual characteristics. However, uh, nevertheless, it has uh, enough, of a class character, enough of a class characteristic to be very useful in many cases. Also... Um, sometimes the, the hair actually has DNA clinging to it. That is individual, that provides individual characteristics and is very useful as evidence. Also, all hair, even if, it, even if it doesn't have the ordinary DNA, it does have mitochondrial DNA. And this it makes it, can narrow down the suspects um, quite a bit. Not as much as ordinary DNA, but very often it's almost as good. We'll see a little bit about that um, soon. Hopefully. So let's try to let's try to think. What is hair? You know, what's the part of hair that we're most interested in? What is hair made of? Uh, there are three. You know, we look at it as three different parts. There's the outside, the outside of it. We call that the cuticle. Uh, there's the inside, which provides most of the color. We call that the cortex, and the medulla. That's inside the cortex. It sometimes shows through. In human beings, not that much. Uh, in animals, uh, the actually um, the medulla is prominent and has actually curious and fascinating designs. Um, anyway, for human beings, it's usually not it's usually not very prominent. But uh, it, the hair is composed of these three parts. So the cuticle is the outer layer. Um, it's often is very different from uh, different animals and different. It's different for from human and other animals. Uh, there are three different types. It's called coronal, spinous, and imbricate. Um, the coronal is, you know, it looks like it's vertical cups. The way the cells work is the cells like they form like uh, little cups like this as the hair, um, as the hair grows up, uh, as the hair, you know, goes up. You see the outer thing looks like it's, it's like little, uh, one cup over another cup over another cup forming the hair. Um, spinous is when these, uh, the edges of the cups like stick out like a spine. So it's not just one cup up in one cup. It's one cup with a sharp edge like this. And another cup like this with a, uh, let's say, with a sharp edge over here and over here. Uh, I'm not drawing it well. Uh, imbricate is uh, where you don't really see the cups. It's actually so really, really smooth. So that um, one end is like really right on top of the other. It doesn't really look like cups. It looks like a really smooth design all the way up the hair. Um I'm not going to go into exactly, you know, how to uh, differentiate between between the three, but you should know that there are three of them: uh, the, the the coronal, spinous, and imbricate. Um, there's the cortex; that's the part that gives it the color. Uh, it's, you know, again, you can use this to, to differentiate between someone who's blonde-haired and black-haired, uh, but again, uh, that's that's what the cortex is. The medulla; that's the middle part. Um, there are three kinds of medulla of hair. Uh, one is where it's like um, Continuous. I mean, this is like a cross section of the hair. Uh, if you have like the outer parts of the hair over here, like this, the medulla shows up over here. Sometimes it's a, it's a nice line. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's, it's like broken apart with little things like this. And they're actually a lot of curious little broken up like that. Sometimes you have a tiny piece here and a tiny piece far away. That's like it's um, 
more fragmented. Continuous is when it's a straight line throughout. Interrupted is when it's like broken apart. Uh, or fragmented is when it's like tiny pieces here and there. Uh, um, mostly this is for animals. Human beings really do not have... Uh, it's interrupted at best and fragmented uh, usually. And, um, you know, usually people do not have much of a medulla. But again... Uh, to differentiate between, be, differentiate between human and animal hair, these things are very important to know. Um, the medulla may cover, the, again, it may be continuous and cover the entire hair volume. And again, it's, it forms very interesting designs for different animals. Um, like uh, cats have a very curious bead-like, I think, design. Uh, anyway, uh, but human beings have uh, really nothing that much interesting. The Usually, the, again, the medulla is really not much of a medulla. I mean, you might see pieces here and there, but it's really not consistent. Uh, those of the mongoloid race, they actually do have defined and relatively continu continuous, at least uh, from what I understand most of the time. Other races, they have either severely fragmented or barely there at all. This, again, as mentioned, uh, you can use the medulla and what the medulla looks like to know not only that it's an animal hair, but it, which kind of animal it comes from. Okay, the, it's important to know the three different hair growth stages. Uh, the antigen, catagen, and telogen. Uh, let, let's like, look at the pictures. It's a lot easier to see from here. Uh, this is the antigen phase. That's when it's growing healthy. Um, most of its life is, well, most, well, yeah, pretty much most of its life is, uh, as a living hair, is, um, is, is in the antigen phase when it's growing. Um, we have here the root here. It's like where the cells are built up and it grows all the way out, all the way through the skin, the skin layer. Um, it, again, this root here, it's not really drawn to scale, but it, it, it's got a plenty of a root around here full of cells with DNA. This is ordinary DNA. So you get the hair yanked out by the roots, then you got DNA there and you can make um, an individual, it's an individual, individual characteristic. You can identify the single person who the hair comes from. Um, that's if it's uh, in the antigen phase. Unfortunately, antigen phase, again, it's growing. It's stuck there. It's stuck pretty hard. So... Uh, Usually, it's not going to fall out. Um, you're, it's not always easy to find these kind of hairs at a crime scene. Okay, the catagen phase is when it starts getting detached. Uh, the hairs do like, you know, they fall out. It starts getting detached. It's slightly attached. The root is a little bit um, elongated because it's being stretched between what produces the hair, uh, the cells of the hair, and the actual hair. Because it's, it's, it's releasing the, it releases the hair, but again, it's still attached a little bit. Um, so you can see the root is a little elongated over here. Uh, then it falls out completely. And here you have the, the root. Again, this is not this is not really uh, to scale. You have a lot less of the root, and uh, it's not it's not easy to find cells here with DNA. So it's really not it's and again it's not to scale, but it does it is shaped like a like club shaped as they say uh, around like that. In this case, uh, you usually cannot find DNA cells with regular DNA. Now the the hair itself. We'll have mitochondrial DNA, but we'll look at that a little bit later. Okay, so that, the, the telogen phase is when it's completely detached and eventually works its way out, out the surface and falls out. So this is usually the, the hairs, the kind of hairs that are found at crime scenes. They're the ones that, uh, that fall out, and they're going to find when they're out. So, okay, so uh, the follicular tag, uh, that's like uh, the part around the root over here. Like, um, this is like what we call this follicular tag, or over here. Um, uh, let's see. Oops. Yeah, here we are. Okay, the, that's the antigen phase. When it's growing, the hair root is healthy, flame-shaped, and it actually has 